The quarterfinals of the Copa Libertadores are about to begin. There was a lot of drama in the round of 16. Now there are only 8 teams left. The matchups are very spicy as we continue our way to eternal glory. Which is why here in Rank Talks Bowl we're gonna predict the first leg of all quarterfinal ties of the Copa Libertadores 2024. The reigning champions Fluminense needed a comeback against Gremio to keep any hopes of defending their crown. And it looked like they would do just that, as in the 14th minute, Thiago Silva, who returned to the club of his life for this Libertadores, connected a cross with a header to make it 1-0. A few minutes later, Dodi deflected a shot with his elbow, giving Fluminense a penalty, which was converted by John Arias to turn the tie around. Fluminense continued to dominate the game, and early into the second half, Ganso was very close to getting a third, but his wonderful chip hit the crossbar. From that point, Gremio grew into the game, and they got two clear chances in two minutes. One saved by Fabio, and the other inexplicably wasted by Nunes. In the 70th minute, Jemerson would score for Gremio with a header, but it was ruled out for offside after a VAR check. But only five minutes later, Monsalves would scape down the right side, slid in a pass for Nunes to tap it in and finally equalize the series. Not much would happen afterwards and so the game went to penalties. Where despite Ganso smashing the first attempt for Fluminense against the post, Fabio, at 43 years old, would come in clutch, saving two penalties to take Fluminense to the quarterfinals, where they will play against Atletico Mineiro who struggled a lot playing at home against San Lorenzo. In the first half, the Argentine team was the only one creating any threat, with Irala and Reale attempting shots from outside the box and Leguizamón even hitting the crossbar. In the second half, the dynamics seemed to be the same, and Cuello had two one-on-ones, but he was not able to convert them. And San Lorenzo would pay for their lack of finishing, as in the 64th minute Mineiro had a corner and the cross inside the box was headed by Rodrigo Bataglia, former Huracan player, San Lorenzo's biggest rival, to add more salt to the wound to make it 1-0 for the Brazilians. After that, Mineiro had multiple chances to kill off the game, but it wasn't needed, and in a very lacking performance, they knock out the Argentinians. Now we have another Brazilian clash between two teams who have a lot of talent, but are and convincing in the way they play. But with the first leg being at the Maracanã, I'm gonna predict Fluminense to win and take the lead in this series. Junior had to make a comeback against Colo Colo to be able to advance, and early on the team from Barranquilla was the one dictating play, but the Chileans looked threatening on the counter-attack. And it would be Colo Colo the one to strike first, when Lucas Cepeda picked up the ball in the final third, nobody from Junior marked him, and so he was able to shoot and score an absolute golazo in the 43rd minute, to give Colo Colo a 2-0 lead in the tie. Junior, however, would respond quickly, as Didier Moreno would slid in a pass for Carlos Vaca to chip it over Carlos Cortez and make the game 1-0 with Junior still losing 2-1 on aggregate. In the second half, Junior had multiple opportunities to level the tie. Just like in the first leg, Falcón made a defensive mistake, but Carlos Vaca was not able to capitalize, and then a header from Jairo Moreno went just shy of the post. The Chileans still posed a threat, and Vierenberg had the chance to kill off the game for Colo Colo, but the Uruguayan goalkeeper Santiago Mele made a brilliant save with his foot to keep Junior in the game. But in the very next play, the corner was played played inside the box, the header from Paiva hit the crossbar and the rebound landed at the feet of Falcón, who went from almost costing the game to Colo Colo to securing the Chileans a spot in the quarterfinals. We say goodbye to Junior, who I had a feeling it was a mistake trusting them. And now Colo Colo will have to play against River Plate. River, who after securing a 1-0 lead in Córdoba against Talleres, now had to close the tie out in the Monumental. And they did just that. Even though the start of the game was a bit slow, a defensive mistake from Talleres allowed Santiago Simón to strip the ball away, pass it to Rodrigo Aliendro, who with a back heel assisted Colombian striker Miguel Borja to make it 1-0 for River. Talleres had a few chances before halftime, but their finishing wasn't up to the task. Unlike Rivers, 
who pounced on the first opportunity they had in the second half when Maxi Mesa achieved the ball inside the box, assisting Santiago Simon, who made it 3-0 on aggregate. Talleres kept on wasting opportunities until finally in the 69th minute, Esquivel gave a pass to Rivera, who slid the ball in for Shiroti to score a consolation goal. But it was too little, too late. Talleres' lack of finishing means they are out, and River Plate is closer and closer to the final in Buenos Aires. And in this first leg, I'm gonna predict them to beat Colo Colo in Santiago, as I think the Chilean team is very unimpressive and with the superior squad River Plate should have no problem in this tie. After the nil-nil draw in Montevideo, Sao Paulo and Nacional still had a lot to play for in the Morumbi. The start of the game was very back and forth with both teams having chances, but Sao Paulo simply has too much firepower and in the 30th minute a great combination play found Davian Bobadilla on the edge of the box to score a great goal and give the lead to the Brazilians. From that point on, Nacional looked stunned and Sao Paulo took over the game, having some opportunities to score another in the first half. But it was early into the second half that a cross in from Wellington Rato found the head of Jonathan Caleri to make it 2-0 for Sao Paulo. From that point we saw the best from Nacional as Sao Paulo simply sat back and defended. In the 70th minute Mauricio Pereira hit the post and Galeano was not able to score from the rebound which could have brought Nacional back into the game. In the 79th minute Eraso sent a golden opportunity over the crossbar and only a minute later Nicolás López almost scores the free kick of his life but nothing seemed to work out for Nacional and things would only go from bad to worse as in the 83rd minute Juan Izquierdo collapsed onto the pitch and had to be subbed out. He had suffered a heart attack and would pass away a few days later in the hospital. From here I send my best wishes to the family and the rest of Nacional in this very difficult moment which I cannot fully describe with words. The game resumed after this and Nacional had a few chances but it wasn't meant to be. The Uruguayans are out and Sao Paulo move on to play against Botafogo, who traveled away to Palmeiras with a 2-1 lead but they didn't go there to defend. In fact, only 4 minutes in, Savarino almost scores a wonder goal but his shot from distance hit the post. However, the old dog that is Palmeiras began to push more and more, so much so that in the 23rd minute, Richard Rios put in a great cross for Jose Lopez, whose header somehow missed the target. Palmeiras continued having the better opportunities but will reach at half time with no goals. The second half is what brought the heat. In the 56th minute, Mateus Martins fights his way through two Palmeiras defenders, puts in a pass for Jefferson Savarino, who assists Igor Jesus to make it 1-0 for Botafogo. And only six minutes later, Mateus Martins again would find Savarino running on the right, but this time the Venezuelan was the one to take the shot, which went over the body of Weberton. And with only 30 minutes to go, Botafogo were up 4-1 on aggregate. Palmeiras didn't give up and with nothing to lose they began to push and push, Ronnie coming off the bench playing a huge factor in that. But time kept ticking and running very low. In fact, it was the 85th minute and Palmeiras still needed to score 3 goals to take the game to penalties. That's it, right? Like, there's no way that they'd make this happen. Right? Well, in the 86th minute, Palmeiras finally got a goal when a cross from Gabriel Menino was headed by Jose Lopez. In the 89th minute, Aníbal Moreno headed the ball into the box for Ronnie to strike with a volley and score past Victor to make it 2 all. And with all of the stoppage time left to go, Palmeiras only needed one more goal. And I feel like you won't believe me, but they got it. In the 94th minute, a shot from Lázaro took a deflection and after many rebounds the ball landed at the feet of Gustavo Gómez, who smashed his shot into the net to equalize the tie. But in a cruel twist of fate, one of the many rebounds that ball took was against his hand. And so after a VAR check the goal was ruled out, but Palmeiras were not done yet. And in the 100th minute, Menino took a direct free kick from the edge of the box and his shot hit the crossbar. And that was that. Palmeiras were so incredibly close to pulling off one of the best comebacks in Copa Libertadores history, but in the end, Botafogo, I mean Botafogo, are the ones to advance to the quarterfinals. And I think they've convinced me. 
as I believe that they will win in this first leg against Sao Paulo. Peñarol went on vacation to La Paz. They gave the strongest the ball and allowed them to attack knowing that the 4-0 lead gave them a lot of leeway. They were right because the strongest dominated and created a few chances but they were only able to score through a penalty taken by Triverio. They could have scored one or two more but Peñarol's qualification was never in danger. And without much more to say about this game with zero drama, we bid farewell to the strongest and now the five-time Copa Libertadores champions are gonna face against the three-time champions in Flamengo, who also had to play in La Paz to face Bolívar. However, they had only won 2-0 at the Maracanã, so we had a game in our hands. El Mengao had a few good minutes, but Bolívar started growing into the game, and so Flamengo started being bailed out by their defense and Agustin Rossi in goal. In the 34th minute, Ramiro Vaca had a shot from 35 meters out, grazed against the crossbar. But only 5 minutes later, Carlinhos and De La Cruz linked up inside the box, but the Uruguayan was not able to connect with a shot, wasting a clear chance for Flamengo. In the 54th minute, Savio caught inside from the right and his shot took a deflection and hit the crossbar. Bolívar was getting really close and they would finally get the reward as in the 56th minute Mario Gomez put in a cross for Savio to connect with a header and give the lead to Bolívar. The Bolivians kept up the pressure needing one more goal but Rossi was giving it his all to keep Flamengo alive. Like in the 82nd minute when a firecracker from outside the box by Henry Vaca was saved by the Argentine goalie and then the shot hit the crossbar. I swear, Bolívar hit the woodwork so many times during this tie, it's crazy. In the 88th minute, Bruno Enrique outpaced Anderson in a counter-attack and when the defender brought him down, he was sent off, leaving Bolívar with 10 men near the end of the game. Nothing would come off it, however, and Flamengo was able to hold on Barely, and now the two Bolivian teams are out, and now this tie between Flamengo and Peñarol promises to be fireworks. At the Maracanã, Flamengo has been pretty effective, and so despite missing their main goal scorer Pedro, 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 I think that they are gonna win and take the lead in this first leg, but they need to play a lot better to advance. And this is how my predictions are going. Last time around it was perfectly balanced, as all things should be. 4 correct and 4 incorrect guesses, bringing the total score to 63 correct predictions and 47 incorrect. Pretty good score so far, so let's hope I don't fumble this lead towards the end. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, remember to like, leave your comments down below and subscribe to not miss out on more Copa Libertadores content. I'll be seeing you all next time.